Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. So when you think music theory, a lot of you out there probably start thinking of stuff like scales or chord tones or maybe even the whole study of functional harmony. Well, yes, that's useful and important stuff to learn, but there's a very small area of theory that uh, bass players often neglect and it's something that serves as a foundation in learning all of that other stuff. And it's the basis for pretty much everything that we do in music. I am talking about intervals. Learn your intervals and everything, and I mean everything, will start to make a lot more sense. So today I'm going to give you a quick basic primer on intervals and as always you can download the lesson material over at TalkingBass.net so just click on the link in the info below and download the PDF. It's a free download and it covers everything that I'm talking about in here. Then while you're there sign up for the free membership where you'll gain access to even more amazing free content and there's lots of downloads and stuff like that including the scale reference ebook. Okay so go check it out. Okay so what are intervals? Well, intervals are a measurement of musical distance. When we measure physical distances, we use units of measurement like feet, inches, miles, or kilometers for all my metric brethren out there. <laughs> imagine that we didn't have any of those units of measurement. And then imagine having to describe the distance of a table from your wall, or your home to the local school, or the earth to the sun, you know. Communication gets a little messed up, and you end up describing distances with terms like uh, and mmm, and well. <laughs> so, in terms of musical distance on a bass, we have a few different ways of approaching it. Let's take the distance from C to E here on the A string, so 3rd fret to 7th fret. Now the most obvious way to describe that distance to a beginner would be simply in terms of the frets. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 frets of distance. But that's problematic for two reasons. One, that E as a note could be played here, here or here. It can be played in several different places. So it doesn't tell us anything about C to E, it just tells us about that C to that E, okay? Then two, it doesn't give us any more musical information. It's only specific to the bass guitar. We're talking in terms of numbers of frets. It's a fretboard measurement, it's not a musical measurement. Another better way to measure that distance might be using whole steps and half steps, or tons and semitones to my European brethren out there. Now, a half step would be measured as one fret of distance on a bass, and a whole step would be measured as two frets of distance on a bass. But these aren't measurements that, you know, are only used on bass guitars or guitars or fretboard instruments. You know, whole steps and half steps are used in everything in music. So. They're pretty good for using as our description, and they're good with very small distances. So our C to E here, we could see as two whole steps, or four half steps. And if you were to describe that to any other musician, be it a pianist or a, you know, a composer, it wouldn't matter. They would know what you're talking about. So that's okay, but as I said, half steps and whole steps they really only work for smaller distances. It's hard to describe huge distances with, uh, with them, and they don't really give as much in way of musical information. And this is where intervals come into play. So, before I start listing intervals for you, I'll show you why intervals are more useful and why they're so important to learn as our musical foundation. So let's take that C to E that I just mentioned. Now that interval is a major third. Now don't worry about that for now, just work with me. So it's a major third. So if we know the intervals on the neck, that's great for communication. So if somebody says this riff, it starts on a C, it moves up a major third before moving to the fourth. If you know your intervals, that's great. You just think C, up a major third, and then up to the fourth. We can play that and we don't have to um, play it in any one way. We could play the C, move up to a major third there, if you know that major third pattern on one string. If you know it across two strings, you could play it here. We can play it wherever we want. The major third is just a musical measurement regardless of the instrument, okay? So we are then able to play it how we want. Secondly, we can move keys really easily because we now have a measurement independent of the key. So a major third is a major third wherever we are on the neck, whatever the key is. So if we want to move that C to E to a different key, if we want to play it starting on G, we can do that. We just take that same pattern and we can play it there on the G. So if we're seeing intervals in that way, it's a lot easier. We're actually seeing these geometric patterns on the, uh, on the bass and we can just move them around. Thirdly, and most importantly, 
intervals have emotive quality and value. Each interval has a very distinctive sound and feel. So a major third would sound like this, and a minor third would sound like this. And we stereotypically think of the major as happy and the minor as sad. There's a lot more to it than that, obviously, but you get the idea. We're hearing an emotive quality in there. Something that we can recognize orally and musically. So if we know the sound of an interval, it means we gain a much more intimate connection to music and playing in general. So if we learn that a perfect fifth sounds like this, and a major seventh sounds like this, and maybe a minor sixth sounds like this, you know, no longer do you just see these cold, lifeless notes on the fretboard. As you learn how intervals sound, you start to see interesting musical steps and leaps and phrases within those notes. So first you learn what the intervals look like, maybe what the spelling is, so you can see them in everything that you play, and then you learn what they sound like. So if I was to play the song Disco Inferno, let's say. I can see the intervals there that I'm playing. I, you know, they're right there. So as I play it, I've got that note leading up a perfect fifth. I instantly know what that's gonna sound like before I even play it, or as I play it. I've got a minor third up, a, up to the perfect fourth. Down to the minor seventh, I know what that sounds leading back up to the root note. It's just a set of intervals in there. They are the building blocks of that riff. So, as I mentioned, and as you can see there, intervals are the building blocks of music. They're the bricks that we use to build and then describe everything else in music. Scales, chords, melodies, bass lines, whatever it is. Everything is built from intervals, you know, in every style. So, learning intervals will help you develop a strong and vital musical foundation. So, in this lesson, I'm just going to work through the most basic set of intervals that we derive from the major scale. It's important to nail those first and really get those under your fingers and, you know, firmly planted in the brain before adding all the minor and augmented and diminished intervals. But I am going to give you some links in the info below to a lot of my other lessons that will then expand on this. So, if it perks your interest, you'll be able to move on to those. So, to begin with, we need a major scale. Now, I'm guessing that most of you probably know a major scale by now, but just in case you don't, I'll just very quickly run through it. So, we're going to play a C major scale. We're going to start on the third fret of the A string, and then we just work through the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then up to C. Okay, so it's just the natural notes, no sharps or flats. So, in terms of the frets, we've got A string, third and fifth fret. Then we're on the D string, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret. And then on the G string, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 5th fret. Okay, and that's it. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, you want to play it up. And down. Okay, that's your C major scale. Next, we simply number the notes. So we work through that major scale and count through. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, and then we're up to eight, which you could also class as, uh, as one if we were just thinking of uh, standard scale degrees. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then back to one or eight, okay? So, C is the first, D is the second, E is the third, F is the fourth, G is the fifth, A is the sixth, and B is the seventh, when we're looking at that C major scale. So, that's our interval numbers, but that's not enough. We also need the interval qualities. So, when we have major, minor, augmented, diminished, all of that stuff, that's the interval quality. So, there's a very quick way of memorizing this, but I will just list them first, okay? And then I'll give you the tip for memorizing them. So, we have the perfect first, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major 6th, major 7th, and then we're back to the perfect octave, or perfect 1st, okay? So, that's the list, and these are all listed in the, uh, in the PDF, so, you know, you can download that and work your way through it, but the easy way to memorize these is to just think of 1, 4, and 5. If any of you have played a blues and you know about the uh, 1, 4, 5 chord progression, you'll know what I'm talking about here. 1, 4, and 5. So, the 1st, the 4th, and the 5th, they're all perfect. 
So when we're thinking of this major scale, you think major, you know, that's the, the general word that you're thinking. Well, the first, fourth, and fifth are perfect. All the rest are major, okay? One, four, five, perfect. All the rest are major, okay? So that's your little uh, guide for memorizing it. So if I work through again, remember, first, that was one, four, or five, so that's perfect. Major second, major third, fourth, that's a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and then back up to the perfect octave. If you want to, you know, just have a quick way of doing it from a pattern perspective, just think of C, F, and G there, third fret, A string, third fret, and fifth fret on the D string. Think of that little L shape. That might, you know, trigger something in there. You've got this little L shape there. They're your perfect intervals. Okay, so that's the intervals based on the major scale, and you want to learn them as separate individual patterns in their own right away from that scale, because even though we derive them from that major scale, we're not limited, limited to them within a key or within a scale, okay? Wherever you see that pattern, that's a perfect fifth pattern. Okay, so a simple exercise, a pretty mindless exercise that you can use for just sort of getting your head around that is to just take each of those intervals and just work them up the fretboard one fret at a time, work up to the octave and back. Okay, so like I say, it's pretty mindless, but you know, it will help you in thinking of them away from that, uh, from that scale. So let's take the major second, for instance. So C to D, okay, that's our major second pattern. You want to Think of that pattern, that little tone pattern or uh, whole step pattern there, that's the major second. So just take it up one fret, at, uh, one fret at a time. So... And I'm just working up to the C. Okay, I just worked up the octave. Then we could come back down. In whatever way you want, as long as you're seeing that pattern. Uh, perfect fifth, very, very popular pattern there. Just take it up the neck. Okay, so, and you, as you do this, you'll start to hear the sound of it, which is an important part, which I'll come to in a second. So, bam, bam, you get used to that sound, and as you move it up, you know, you get, you just get used to it, okay? So, try that with each of those intervals in turn. So, that's a good start in seeing the intervals recognizing them on the fretboard. But as I've mentioned several times, the most important and most useful part of learning these is learning how they sound. So you could just play them over and over again and, you know, just hope to learn them that way. But the best way is by singing them to yourself, internalizing the sound. Now, it doesn't matter whether you can sing or not, you know, how good you are at singing, just try singing along with them, okay? So that's what we're gonna look at. So, I'll give you a quick demonstration of how this works. So, first of all, let's have a look at the major second interval. So, on a C. So, we had C to D. Okay, so that's the major second. And first of all, just try playing it a few times, just to acclimatize to it. So, then you want to try singing along with your bass. So, take that first note. Bam, bam. Don't worry about how bad you are as a singer, you know, this is gonna help with your pitching. You know, this is gonna help with, with all of that. So, you've just gotta recreate that sound. Bam, 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 bam. You could use the numbers. One, two, one, two. There we are. We're recreating that major second interval. Then, try it without the bass. So, one, two, one, two, bam, 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 bam. And once you've done that, that means you've internalized that major second, okay? So, you know, this is how you can develop your ear. So, one, two, one, two, bam, bam. You might be able to think of this 
you know, away from, you know, the bass and hearing it just before, as the start of the major scale. Each of these intervals has their own kind of uh, mnemonic that you can use, you, you know, you can have something to jog your memory. And with that major second, you can just think, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you know, you can think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're thinking, bam, bam, the very start of the major scale, bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam, so that might help. So one, two, one, two, okay? So that's the major second. Now let's try another one. Let's try the major third. So C to E, one, two, three, okay? So we've got the major third interval. So again, play it a few times. Get used to the sound there, then try singing along. Bam, 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 one, three, one, three, away from the bass. Bam, 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 one, three. Okay, so that's the major third. And again, there's mnemonic ways of doing this. You could think maybe, oh, when the saints go marching in. Bam, 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 oh, when the saints. So you've got bam, 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 bam. It's the first two notes in there. So, you know, for every one of these intervals, you can find your own mnemonic. There's always going to be something that it, you know, that's going to trigger it, you know. So... As soon as you hear that, that interval, you know, if you've got a mnemonic for it, it'll probably uh, set it off. So, the major second, bam, 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 for the major third. Okay, so we're just trying to replicate what we're hearing there with our voice and in our heads. So, you can work through each of these intervals in turn and... As you do, you'll gain a much better connection to the instrument. You'll simultaneously see the patterns on the bass and hear them in your head. So this is how you learn to talk through the instrument. You know, you're starting to learn the musical alphabet. So the next step is to expand your vocabulary. We've only learned a very small part of the alphabet there, you know, just the intervals derived from the major scale, but it's a start. Next, we can learn the minor intervals, augmented and diminished intervals. Then we can need to be able to see them below the root note as well as above. And after that, you might learn the intervals beyond the seventh and the eighth, you know, to the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, and so on. And to help with this, I've already got a bunch of lessons on YouTube that delve much, much deeper into intervals and pretty much teach you everything that you, that you can learn about intervals. So I'll link to those in the info below. And then for those of you that want to learn more about the sound and the ear training uh, side of this, I've got the ear training for bass guitar course over at talkingbass.net. So again, just follow the link in the info below. That ear training course will develop your understanding of intervals, scales, arpeggios, and chord progressions, all in a progressive step-by-step -step manner. I also demonstrate how to apply all of that new skill set in terms of real-time transcription. So uh, go check it out. Okay, so like this video if it's helped, subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell graphic to be notified of weekly lesson releases. And remember to visit TalkingBass.net to grab that free PDF highlighting everything that we've covered. Okay, I'll see you next week.